All right, we are back. Wrapping it up here with the NFC Norse. Wrap it up, kids. Child support's expensive. So we're STDs. Neither of you. Would, I don't know about the last one, but neither of you are paying child support. So nope. Yeah, kids, kids are expensive are, though. I was careful. Wrapping it up. Yeah, and in my day, you could buy Plan B, and nobody, nobody care think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Casey, I don't want you to, to tell anybody about wrapping it up. <laughs> Well, that's another story for another time. <laughs> it's against his religion. <laughs> it actually is against some people's religion. But anyway, yeah, yeah, it's, next, called, it's called Catholicism. The lions. Um, anyways. Need them little tithers. And we're back. You got to come over to Patreon for that uh, inside joke. All right. So the lions. Probably a surprising team for 2022. At one point, they were the highest scoring offense, putting up like 40 points a game. Um, definitely cooled off down the end of the season. Just missed the playoffs there, as we all saw on Sunday Night Football. They got the win, but Big D Seahawks got the last spot over them because my goddamn Rams couldn't win. But definitely a team on the rise here. They are favored winning the division. They're the highest uh, projected win total. So. Not a whole lot of change here within, the, obviously, the coaching staff remained the same. Obviously, Jared Goff's back at quarterback. Offensive line didn't change a damn thing. Um, Why really, would the, they? really, the biggest movement here was in the running back room, which has completely changed. Obviously, we had Gibbs uh, get drafted at, what was that, 13 overall? Uh, it was like 12th, sorry. 12th overall. And then they added uh, Sam Laporta with uh, pick 35, or sorry, pick 34. Thanks, Miami Dolphins. Those were the the big two of the biggest offensive additions. Obviously, they also added David Montgomery as well too. Uh, they brought back Marvin Jones Jr. as well too. Jamison Williams suspended for the first six games of the season for, I th- believe it was for betting on um, college basketball. I mean, yeah, betting on college basketball, but it was inside the facility. A lot of people yeah. getting, a lot more people getting popped with that. Well, I think they had, an, I think they had two other players who got suspended as well too. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just so stupid, stupid um, rule. Yeah, fuck then, out of your NFL. Eh, just nah, uh, 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 we can disagree there. Um, just don't do it in the Every, team facility. The NFL makes so much goddamn money off gambling. Get the fuck yeah, out of here. Just don't do it in the facility. Fuck out of here. Don't do it. You're not gambling on the games that you're playing in. Get the, the fuck facility. out. Just of don't here. do it in the facility. That's fine. Do it at home, and you wouldn't have gotten in trouble. Fuck out of here with this stupid shit. Yeah, I agree. No gambling in the facility. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No gambling in the facility. You're a professional athlete. You should be held to a higher standard. You're getting paid millions of dollars to play a goddamn kid's game, and you can't wait to go home to place a, ba- a bet on college basketball? Come on now. Hey, sometimes you got to get them in before the games are starting. I mean, what the fuck? Yeah. I bet they were all doing it. They were all probably, like, taking bets and having fun. Like, fuck If they were all rule. doing it, then they all would have gotten caught. If, so if, you, cool. wanted, if you were on the inter- if you were clicking fucking shit at the wrong time, then, then you got caught, like. You're on the facility's uh, Wi-Fi. I think that's what it was. Yeah, if you could, if they, I could guarantee you that if they were in the locker room trading cash to bet on basketball games, nobody would give a shit. No, right. You just got to not be as an idiot. As long as you're not dealing with Javaris Crittenden, that's all. Yeah. So how do they even find that shit out? Like to know who's doing what on the internet? Well, you, you just have to be like. It's just a matter of you just can't have it. You can't have any sort of things where people are wondering nope. what might be happening with. Yeah. You know. All that kind of shit. If you want to gamble on basketball outside of the facility with your homies, do Great. you? Other than that, just keep it fucking tight. Who, tight, who was tight um, projected to be the wide receiver three before the gambling? That's who I'd put my money on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, Jameson was gambling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Khalif Raymond. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, and then obviously they brought in uh, Hendon, sex worker there in the third round as well too. Hooker. So, um, the Lions seem to be trending in the right direction here. They're projected to win the division for the first time since 2002, um, which is wild that it has been that long since they were favored to win the division. Over under of nine and a half wins. Again, we're going to talk about the we're, we've talked about offensive lines here. A very strong offensive line. Um, with those two tackles, Ragnow holding down the middle. You got Holopuli Vitae with at guard, um, then Jonah Jackson at left guard. I mean, Vitae was playing tackle for the Eagles for a while there, so um, you got a nice Haas there in the middle as well. 
Obviously, we want to see Goff take another step forward there. Finished his QB eight on the season, thirteen in points per game. But he still had a he still had some some good things there. He was fifth in adjusted completion percentage, which was I thought was was good for him. Uh, a lot of drops last year. Uh, seventh in yard per attempt. Um, and something that something that was is interesting that is counterintuitive of Goff is he was elite last year in being blitzed. He was top five in almost all categories, and that's one of the things that teams really, um, going back to his Rams days, is that's something that defensive coordinators really tried to do as they played that cover zero and just let just tried to hope that Goff was going to make a mistake. mistake. Yeah. Now he was top six in interceptions, but all the other categories were great too. Um, he was ahead of Mahomes in in a bunch of those categories. So that was, that was impressive to see from Goff. He was a top three in passing metrics um, for play action passing for both grade and adjusted completion percentage. So them utilizing play action work, it's something they could take a look at with bringing in two great pass catching running backs there and having an, uh, what should be an improved running game. I, I think we can all agree that Williams is probably just cut. Williams is a jag from a certain perspective, kind of Jamal. fell into the end zones. Yeah. yeah. Jamal Williams from that perspective. Yeah. Is, I think he definitely had a led the league in, in rushing touchdowns last year, but I think a lot of those came from within the five. So yeah, for sure. Um, I know I know Swift got tackled several times within the five. No, no real faith put into Jamal Williams' stock of any sort. Um, yeah, I'm good. On yeah, that. we did see the the rise to. I don't know if we call him elite, but he's definitely at the top tier of the secondary secondary wide receivers with Amon Ross St. Brown. So second highest PFF grade. Jason's favorite a dot very low there but he's top 15 in all their major receiving categories except for touchdowns how could that be with such a bad a dot yeah. how could that be he got a ton of targets oh 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 well, who would have thought yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> also 5.1 yards per catch after reception helps as well too so yards per yeah y- yak per per <laughs> catch yeah did you just make a soundboard of yourself? No, that's the fucking, that's <laughs> fucking Jimmy. Oh. You think I would have been like? <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I really and truthfully, because I'm a good do. imitationist. <laughs> Definitely bottom third of the league. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's only 32 of us, and imitationalist is that is that the word you just used? <clears throat> you have the best words, don't you? C C. <laughs> But um, what do you guys think about the Lions offense coming in, into the year? Like, is this something you're obviously we're buying into it from a certain perspective. We've got we've got three people going in the top six rounds. Which I mean, it isn't great, but I'm oh, sorry, four going in the top six rounds, six rounds here with uh, Goff, Amon Ra, Jamison, and then Gibbs. So I think Gibbs is trending up. He keeps going higher and higher and higher. I think we might be able to start seeing him at the beginning of the third um, rather than here at the end of the third. He's been going over Barkley in recent mock drafts, going after. He's basically the next running back after that top four tier of, uh, obviously, uh, Bijan. Bijan, Brees, JT, and then McCaffrey. But he's seemingly going over ahead of Saquon at that point. Are you guys comfortable with that? I wasn't for a little while. I've, I've come around to it. I don't necessarily love doing it, but I just I don't know that I really want to just take a, rec- or a, a running back in that range really yeah um the the upside and the the intrigue is is nice for for gibbs there i have been coming around on it a little bit it was a big no for me for a while there i would have said in startups it was a no for me in rookie drafts the opposite but sure um after doing that industry mock and hearing all these wide receiver forward analytical heavy people come in and say that they're taking Gibbs over JSN pretty much unanimously. It's like because of the running back scarcity and he's so young and meets all these analytical marks, not to mention the draft capital, which they didn't like that the Lions did it, but because they did it, that now puts him yeah. in a whole other realm of basically guaranteed to be good. So I, I, if he doesn't I don't know if he's out, guaranteed to be good, but he's guaranteed to get a lot of opportunities to be good from the jump. Well... Sure. Mm. I mean, anyone's not guaranteed to be good, but they're. I don't know what the Hall of Famer there, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Mr. Mr. Montgomery. I mean, that that's probably been my. I mean, honestly, though, that that's probably been my hesitancy with Gibbs is 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 Montgomery because I, I know that they're <clears throat> planning on doing some 
you know, fun stuff with them. And they were super, obviously we saw the draft day um, photos. They were super pumped to get them. Um, but Montgomery's no, like, <laughs> he, he's no slouch, man. The, the dude, you know, he, he produces and he produces well. And, and so that's where my hesitancy comes in. It's not so much the player. It's so it's the position. It's the RB room itself. Right. And I, and I, I don't know, unless they completely change the way that their offense is, which I just can't see that happening with, um, with, you know, Jamison coming in now, um, Amon um, there, the, the passing game, I think is still going to be uh, really strong. So it, it's hard for me to see them bringing down that median of the rush game back to, you know, closer to the passing game. And, and if that doesn't happen, I just don't know how Gibbs is going to perform at the level that everybody wants him to. Well, that's funny you mentioned that. It's, hell. it's funny you mentioned that because they were tenth in passing and thirteenth in rushing for in both attempts. So um, they're both above average in both, which is they had an awful Strong defense. So too. they had bad defense as well. I agree with that, but I also think their schedule, just who they're playing, and and the fact that they perform this year, it it's going to be completely different. I I don't look at schedules come mid season or the end of season, but you know, um, off the rip, I thought that I I saw them it being challenging and i just don't know if they're going to be able to play the same way that they did um the last year as they as as it ended up you know um how uh, how on fire they were yeah DraftKings had monty at 750 and caesars has gibbs at 580 yeah you need reception totals to to really which is not something that they're going to have right no. now um to really balance out what what you think Gibbs is going to do I mean the the counter to that is is how efficient you know Swift has been at at times in that role yeah. um of kind of I, I think Monty's better than all the running backs they've had there outside of Swift um as far as the actual running backs that may play a specific style rather than you know kind of what Swift is going to do and I think I think you're going to see Gibbs in a Swift sort of role but plus plus uh yeah. for, for that so i i think there is enough there for jamar gibbs to or jameer uh, jameer gibbs gosh uh, i can't even trust yeah, you can't even, even pronounce a guy's name right i know uh you know this that's this j-a-h-m-y-r that really throws me off there um yamir yeah uh but i, I do think that there is there's, there's probably enough there for everyone to to eat and jameer uh, <laughs> to to be fairly productive, and it's also, you know, a sort of a, a projection because it's dynasty, and you're getting a young player here who, if he is efficient in his first season, you know, we'll we'll just go ahead and uh, solidify his value at, at being a third to second round player here, kind of moving forward. But I think for most people, I don't think Montgomery is a concern, but I think you're not wrong because i do think montgomery is a really good player who also isn't terrible in the passing game which is yeah you know not something that they've had with any of those other running backs that have been there in the last few years i think we could see some fun things especially the first while jameson is is out we could see some definitely some both monty and gibbs on the field at the same time a decent amount get get gibbs out um out wider in the slot there because after Amon Ra, I mean, you got a couple of you got your Josh Reynolds, your Marvin Jones, who's probably thirty five at this point. Um, you've got your Khalif Raymonds, you know what I mean? Those kind of people who aren't really sparking too much excitement there. Thirty three, yeah, close enough. Um, but no, yeah, I mean, Marvin's a nice little safety blanket for them, but I do think Gibbs can come in here and really solidify himself, and that they're kind of alluding to the fact that they're, they're going to kind of use him in sort of that fashion and there's, there's always a lot of talk in the offseason like that so but i think a huge win for the lions was the fact that you kept ben johnson yeah. as your oc who was probably a pretty hot commodity and he kind of said he wanted to stay and grow so you're getting continuity with everybody yeah. um, and now you're getting to throw gibbs uh kind of in this to have a toy to play with uh so yet you know I, i'm having a hard time with gibbs because I do really like him, and I and I don't really have a problem necessarily taking him, uh, but you know, I'm probably just not drafting a running back at that position. So yeah, it's not it, an anti Gibbs thing at all. Right. Um, yeah, I feel like his value is insulated, and in, yeah, if he does anything, it's he's gonna go I, up. I I want him. I do really want him, but it's just like I just feel like it's a that's a real tough spot to take him in. Yeah, right I feel now. better taking him at. 105 and rookie drafts and I do taking him at the 308 spot. Yeah. 
just feels, I don't know why. Super flex kids, okay? One, two, and uh, one quarter. Tight end premium. I mean, I saw him go. I just did a rookie draft last weekend, and he, in super flex, he went 103. I'll give you the yes on him so we can we can kind of keep it moving. Okay. But, you know, Montgomery's another player that I would want to would, would be fine with yeah. drafting because I think there's going to be meat on the bone. 10.08 RB31. For, for Montgomery to have a good season and, and if he can stay healthy um, I think I think he's I think this is a fun offense uh, this is definitely forward. the best line he's pl- ever played behind so right for sure so I mean the the fun thing with Gibbs is that he can make your play in or make your day in one play um, and Montgomery not so much so they do have a nice little one kind of yin yang thunder lightning kind of deal but Montgomery's uh, passing game I think slightly underrated that that could take uh, a so little bit away from initially for sure from from Gibbs uh, and you know what I mean but like I said if they get on, if they can get them on the field at the same time or run a little split back right and I believe you know at one point Swift was in in double digits uh, for his points per game and his limited roles or uh, Swift rather yeah. Yeah. so I think I think Gibbs can be there all day so I don't think you necessarily not a not a ton to worry about there so that, that's just a me thing where I'm not necessarily comfortable taking them at three eight but I, I i i've been coming around and i think by the time we wrap this up all these divisions and rankings and stuff i'll be i'll be settling in that, that that's a fine take gibbs um it's not wrong to take gibbs no i don't think so where are we at with uh jared it's going at six he's going at five end of the end of the fifth round is i don't, the, I don't QB like 18 i don't like taking jared golf there yeah i haven't i like I don't like taking Kirk or Jared Goff really. I I like waiting on. I mean, I mean, he's not. A the thing is, he's not really going there. That's the whole thing. Like in most of his ADPs, he's going 72, 76, 60, 61, 63. So, I mean, he's going in that range ish. So, um, QB 77, 60. You know what I mean? So I, I feel went, better about that than I do 60 overall, 512 in our ADP. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, but that's where he's at. You know, I mean, that's where he's. But he's not really. He's going there, but he's not really going there. He can. He can float down a little. Yeah, he can. Yeah, he definitely floats down. Just an average of correct. Maybe like eight, eight drafts post NFL. Yeah, I haven't taken golf in any of those spots, so that tells me that I I don't love it. Yeah, Um, I've taken him in the I've taken him in the late sixth before. I think I might have been one of those seventy two or seventy sixes, and I'm okay with him there. Um, yeah, I'm always t- just looking at Russell instead. You know, I'll take him over Russell. But if, if really, if he could be in the spot that Russell is in, right? Then, which sure. is kind of what Matt's alluding to. Yeah. Russell's here at 68 overall, yeah. six eight. Yeah. What do you think, Big D? His value for me when we're drafting is different than his value when when I have an established team. I'll I'll put it that way. Like, like when I'm drafting, I I can't pull the trigger at where where he's at around that area. Um, I'd rather have a few of the others, um, depending on the build, of course. Um, I'd rather have a few of the others, but but in like on an established team, I think I'm willing to go out and try to try to take a chance on him because I mean, what he finished QB eight last year, was that right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and his offense is improving, his weapons are improving. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and so it's like the the ceiling there I feel is higher than QB eight, which sounds crazy. Um, but uh, he has a decent deep ball that I don't think he's been able to showcase um, is as much as he's wanted to. Um, I think Williams gives him that opportunity. I I feel like he's the he's the kind of player, you know. We talked about and 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 you can go look it up um, on the tubes the uh, Jordan Love and the gamble on on quarterbacks like that. Like Goff is the kind of player that I'm willing to gamble on because I I feel like his upside is. Uh, QB five overall for the season, just because of how that offense is set up, and and I think as a contender, I, I definitely am am in there. And when I'm building a team and start up scratch, I, I, I it's hard for me to do it. But but I don't know. The the more that we've been doing these, the the my my water's starting to boil, boys. I, I think I'm starting to get on board a little bit more with them. How does the drafting of Hooker affect you? How you feel about golf at all? I don't think it does. For it me. doesn't. It yeah. doesn't. Okay, nah, good. I mean, okay, I'm glad we're all, I'm glad we're all up there. I don't think so either. I think you could probably get hookers and and I feel better about taking golf if I could get hooker a little later, I guess. A lot, yeah. I think you're right in that that, that golf's going to have 
probably another solid year if if not being somewhere right at slightly I mean, below or slightly above where he finished. They and make the I, playoffs like he's the, there another year. Yeah, and I, I think yeah. I think he'll probably get another year. I don't know if Ben Johnson stays around, uh, which you he's know, gonna get a head coach. But job. you're you you're I think you're solidifying the golf value there for another two or three years. Mm-hmm. Where I don't I don't think you necessarily have to be scared about taking him for him. You know, everybody wants to talk about how you're taking him at peak value. And it's like, well, but yeah, but you're not. You're drafting with QB 18 and he finished 10 spots above that. So which in in uh, so we have here in this in the show notes that he's QB eight and averaged uh, 13. er, He was 13th in points per game. That's filtered from weeks one through 17 Uh, on sleeper. I believe they, they have him at 10. I think that's with week 18 and counted, which no one in fantasy is playing week 18. So that's why if, you, if you're if you paying close attention on the YouTubes mm-hmm. and you see the discrepancy, that's what that is right there. I don't think that with the ADP that I don't I don't see it ever going higher than 512. Like no, fifth I don't round. think so either. It's never going up. No. But it doesn't mean that it's not worth it, right? Because if you can get – because it, it, he's played well. Right, I don't know I if he's, he's got long, another long round. Term. I think he could go up another round. So I don't. Yeah, yeah. I think if he if he has it puts if together comes, another if he good comes out season puts a this year, a, 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 and he puts up his ceiling and finishes a top six to eight, finishes a top six QB. Which I don't even really care about that. Like I mean, I, I think we get a little he, too caught up in that. If he with plays well players. and they make the playoffs and they take the step forward and or at least maintain what they did last year from an offensive standpoint, he's going to be the quarterback the next year. And that's it's it's going to be a whole other ball game. So maybe it could go up, but he, he's twenty eight, going on you know twenty nine, not super old for a quarterback. Uh, but regardless, if he's the long term answer for the Lions, he's going to get another starting job. Like, you know what I mean? He's going to yeah, he's going to be a, which I, in super yeah. flex. If you can nail down a fucking starting quarterback, yeah, that's really all you need. Yeah, and that's why I, there's this ambiguity in some of this, some of the rest of these players. You just don't know from year to year. Especially when you get into this ADP, like we don't we, we don't know about Russell. Like I feel like he's he's about to take a step forward and, and be the future there. But they do have an out where they can get out for like forty dead or something crazy. <laughs> wow! Um, but they got Walmart 35, money. They got Walmart. Money but they do though, have Walmart so. money. Kenny Pickett. You know, we just did uh, the Steelers over on the Patreons, and yeah. I think we came to the conclusion he's probably the long term answer there based yeah. on this how they Daniel operate. Daniel Jones, let's go! Um, I think the interesting one there is Trey Lance, who is yeah. going two spots ahead of. Yeah, but Lance I, I can't is, be but doing Lance that. Is, Lance is moving in the wrong direction. There. Yeah, I can't be doing that uh, at all. I, I don't hate taking Lance. I think I got Lance in like the eighth or ninth round or something in the, in the yeah, last live mock did. we did. I'll do that all day, yeah. but not not there in the fifth. Uh, Geno Smith, you know, I mean, it was he was kind of shaky this year. Were they going to take a quarterback? Was it going to be a rich? Like he's a good player, but he's a little older and. Don't know what's going to happen next year, so there's uncertainty there. Derek Carr could definitely fall from that, or take a step forward too. Jordan Love question mark. Uh, we just talked about the Packers. Make sure you go check that out if you're watching on the YouTube's. Aaron Rodgers old as fuck. Brock Purdy all day. You know, big big time value right there in the eighth round. Like he sure, should, he should definitely be up. He was on our top of our cheaper. I think I think QBs well, I, that I, win your Superflex League list, but. I think early drafts have his ADPs down a lot further. I think he might be going. I don't know where he went in the most. I'm looking it up now, where he went in the most recent mock. We can check it out. All right. Um, the, the, I think the I think the other interesting one here is the other shiny new toy here. Um, he with, went his QB twenty five eighty one overall, which is f- about a round and a half higher in the yeah. last draft. I think the other interesting piece here is, is Laporta. Um, was drafted the third overall pick of the second round. Um, how are you guys feeling about Laporta with in, with that tenth round pick? He's going off at tight end twelve. So you know, obviously, you're getting good feedback from Laporta or whatever. I mean, like we said with some of these other ones, you're not getting very much negative feedback at at OTAs and rookie mini camps. Uh, but much like we were talking with the Bears last year, like right now for for six weeks here to open up the season, I know he's a rookie tight end and. There's going to be some volatility there, but I mean, you don't have a real, I mean, you got Marvin Jones, who's good, but a little older, but you don't really necessarily have a solidified WR2 slash WR3. So Laporta seems like he could really come right in and catch, catch some pretty good fire here. Yeah. Uh, So I, you know, and all the reports are good. Uh, He seems good. I have no problem. Laporta is one of my favorite picks uh, in, in the, was it 10th round, 11th round? 10.08, 10.05. Especially when I've missed on a tight end or I can then pair him with like, you know, uh, 
if I took Schultz, I could take Laporta, you know, that kind of deal, um, which has been something I've been able to pull off in a few of these drafts. So, you know, I don't, I don't want Laporta to be my only guy, but I like taking him as, as a younger, shiny object, uh, and, and I have absolutely no problem with it. Um, I'm, I'm a big, big proponent of Laporta. Yeah, if I've missed on tight end and, and you want to come in here and, and take, take a younger guy and then, and then maybe get, you yeah. know, there's other, there's other tight ends going a little later that, that could, you know, pair him with Cole Komet, pair him with Chig, pair him with Trey McBride, any of these guys, right? I like taking bang, bang. Knock a couple ends. out. At, uh, in would you rather rounds. have? We'll go back to Ingram. Would you rather have Laporta or Ingram? I'll take Ing- or uh, Laporta. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess you got to swing on the shiny new object, but that would be a good. You yeah. could take both those guys, right? On a, on a nine ten turn or eight nine turn, or you know, grab grab you the older guy that you know is going to score you a bunch of points. Yeah, like I like a I like Wall or Laporta. Yeah. Uh, you know, Ingram a little cheaper than Wall or Laporta. You know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I like Laporta over Mayer. Yeah, I, I know mean, Mayer's I, going a little higher, but yeah. I think the offense is set <clears throat> set for Laporta. I think that his skill set works really well with with um, you know you looked at Hawk and he was producing when he was in Detroit, and obviously he's he's moved on, and and now I think Laporta has the the skill set that can produce as a rookie um, and then go up from there. So I'm I like him, I like him a lot. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm I would Mayer and Laporta are, are that same the same. Same way I'm talking about Laporta, I'd put I'd put them both in there. I want one of them, um, yeah. Through the tight end premium drafts that we're doing, and then stacking them with a Waller or a Schultz or you know so, something along Angry. those lines. Um, so, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, anything else on the Lions here? You talk a little Jamison Williams before we get out. Yeah, of Yeah, just I mean I know I know mm. I think we're all James. I think we're all pretty big Jamison fans, but I mean we thought think, this is going to be the year we we're going to see Jamison, and now we have to wait till week seven. Yeah, makes him cheaper. Makes him cheaper, but at least he's not hurt. What's your thoughts on Jameson? Are you in? Oh, I'm in. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I can't wait wait to see him, man. I feel like oh, I feel like it's just like it's growing and growing, then it goes away, and then it's growing and growing and goes away. And it's um, it, I think he the anticipation makes the dick grow longer. You know what I'm saying? You're edging with uh, Jameson Williams. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, are pretty sure. much. Yeah, We're I mean that's what it feels with like. Jameson We're, Williams. That's a, yeah, the unfortunately you know, a good analogy, but yeah. <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, good case. The, the people who are just getting caught up in using any sort of measurement yeah. met- metrics against what second or first Fuck year players here. do, stop listening to those guys right fucking now. It's yeah. the dumbest shit I've ever heard. It doesn't even make sense. You can't. You're not comparing apples to apples, and just cut it out. Like. Either buy into Jamison Williams because you liked what you saw at Alabama, and I don't care what he did necessarily. On the, they told you what they were doing when they drafted him in the beginning of the season. We're going to bring him along slowly. He got behind defenses multiple times on an NFL field. He caught one of them. I mean, only one. It's we're we're. I mean, how many targets did he have last year? I think four. Well, it was still a twenty nine percent target share when he was out there, though. So, <laughs> yeah, but the, the targets per route run not good. Yeah, I just. <laughs> I'm buying into Jamison Williams. <laughs> I like the explosiveness. I liked what I saw in college. I, and then on the NFL field, yep. he showed me a few times that he's still faster than everybody right. else. Oh, shit. Remember and, that guy? Right. And he was just one of those guys in college who just had that you electric feel to it him. It was coming. Where, and he can not only just get you over the top, as he's good with the ball in his hands. Yeah. Like he's, he's electric with the ball in his hands as well. So I don't think he needs to just rely on big over the top uh, plays. And I think... Ben Johnson's going to be licking his chops to get him in there. It's unfortunate. Definitely a, definitely a great compliment to Amon Ra. Perfect compliment to Amon Ra. And I think you can kind of then sometimes switch what they're doing up a little bit and and give J-Mo the, the Amon Ra because we, we did this once before. And it's like I went back and watched Jameson Williams and he caught a bunch of screens and he caught a bunch of stuff behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah. He caught a bunch of shorter stuff. Like it's just, it's. He can do all that stuff. So you can switch yeah. those up. Amon Ra can win deep too. Like a, I think we could see if ja- if Jamison comes out and and he could be definitely up there with Waddle. I think that's. I think he could. That's. His, I agree. He has that ceiling. He, I mean, you close your eyes. You. I mean. I mean, you chop the head off there, and you're seeing a lot of things you're seeing with Waddle that you saw yeah. at Alabama that you saw with Jamison there. And and his rise of how fast that value is going to go jump up 
is going to be so fast. Like it's what, what if he catches on fire and has a couple of good games, it's just going to be, all those people are no longer going to be saying a goddamn word about it. And they're going to be by Jamison Williams and, you know, making up some reason that they didn't say what they said about nonsense comparisons. So, um, Interestingly enough, I'm assuming I know the answer here, but if you're, are you taking Jamison or Traylon? I'll take. Mm. Yeah, I think I'll take Traylon. I, I'm taking Traylon. I think I'm taking Williams still. All right, we're still. They're not still. But I want. Yeah. I would like to get them both. That's my goal. Yeah. yeah would I you rather have Jamison or Pickens? Jamison. Yeah. Yeah, Jamison. Uh, what about Judy or Jamison? Uh, I'll take Jamison. 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 Yeah. Okay. So fun. Uh, it's putting the F. The what F about, is for fun. Here's, an, the fun here's an interesting one. What about Christian Watson or Jameson? James. I think we're all Jameson all there. Dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think we're it's all Jameson there. Yeah. Real question. So okay. he comes back at a home game versus Miami. That's his first game he could play this that, year. That so. that could be that could be a hundred point game. Yeah. Goff <laughs> already Goff already played in one, so why not have him play a second one? Yeah, Miami's Miami's got Fangio. That's a that's a good upgrade for sure for, that for sure. Yeah, and true. a little Ramsey. Ramses does not dance at the party. Ramsey, Ramsey's what was that like? A, a, what, what, what was Game of Thrones worst character on TV? Ramsey's, yeah, Ooh. definitely not I think, great. Ooh. I think Pittman is the only wide receiver there on the on what we're showing right now on the screen that I would take over Williams. I would agree with that. Yeah, I, I like Traylon a hair more. I think Devontae is still on there. wide receiver and Quentin, Fuck Quentin man. Johnson, yeah, Jamo, John Jameson, Traylon Brooks. Yeah, what's yeah, you say? I, Jameson I, or Quentin? Oh, uh, Traylon. Yeah, yeah. Quentin Johnston. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> or uh, where's golf? Is that what it comes down to? I mean, uh, I mean, I, I think I think they it's can, not quite the game breaker. No, but better after the catch. It's bigger. More. Bigger, I don't bigger, know. That's a, that, that's a tough. I, I'm probably higher on QJ than a lot of people. Uh, but we're also higher on JMO than a lot yeah. of people. And you're also higher on fucking Hakeem Butler too. So yeah, yeah. I don't. I'm not saying it's a landslide. Like I would Hakeem definitely, you know, a hundred percent of all my drafts take Williams over some of those players, like like Quentin Johnson. But but I, I think he's you know he he's pretty high for me. I I I'm. I'm excited to see him finally at some point uh, on the field uh, outside of what he, you know, the little bit that he played like and, I, I'm, and healthy uh, and healthy and in the team facility and being able to practice, not gambling and, and you know, yeah, but gambling suspension, he wasn't able to be with the team, you know, and, and lots of, lots of pieces. So him just being able to be there and just soak everything up and be part of that. I think, I think it's good thing. I, and his, his ceiling is, is really high. I believe very high. Yeah, I'll go Jameson over Quentin Johnston. I guess I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna draft Quentin Johnston and then come back and draft Jameson. I really wish the. Uh, I really. You got to uh, get Keenan later. The Lions need to have some sort of redheaded offensive player so we can get a little Jamo and Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> Jamo and Ginger. Mm, yeah. Well, yeah. Is just, there any well, good whiskey? Is there any good? Is there any good? Love a whiskey. Let well, me just get a Jamo. Yeah. What are we in? What are we in high school? High schoolers are drinking Jameson straight up. I'm 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 going. I'll I'll do Jamo and Ginger. I don't want to drink Jameson straight up. No, I'll shoot it. I'll shoot it, shot. but I'm not gonna be like, mm, I love. What's the difference between shooting Jamo it and neat? I don't want to sip it. I'll just put it down the gullet and wash it down with a beer. I'd rather do that than drink a Jamo Ginger. ginger. That's a wildly a whiskey wild. ginger. I don't really want Fire. any mixed liquor drink. I'll just take the liquor. What I need to fuck around with is Coke for or ginger or whatever. Unless I need a little caffeine, then I guess I'm into the Coke and, and bourbon, whatever. <laughs> Still talking about soda? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> back the shots, baby. <laughs> yeah, Jameson's not a really great whiskey. Yeah, if you got something a little nicer, I'll, I'll sip it. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not the worst. It's a little hot. <laughs> it's not great. It's hot outside for sure. Mm-hmm. Charleston, South Carolina. All right, let's get the FF out of here. What do y'all say? Yeah, yeah let's do it. Going on midnight here. <laughs> make sure it's no one brought it up. Uh, make sure that um, you like, subscribe, comment yeah. below. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't try to squeeze it in there now, okay, buddy? <laughs> Check Son us out on patreon.com backslash FF Dynasty. Check it out. We're having a good time over there. 
We're having a AFC, AFC North over there are going to be getting half the divisions over there, so go check that out. Extra shows, live hangs, mock drafts. Also, I want to say that, you know, there's there's no secret sauce over there. We don't have some model. We don't have some whatever. Like We do have a model. It's just, it's just Jason. Yeah. Um, given Tom Brady and HJ. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's just a good time. Somebody else to talk to. Extra shows. You're not you're not paying me for shit that anybody couldn't know. You're paying me because it's it's a good time. You like what we say and you're liking the vibe. Like that's that's what you should be paying people extra couple bucks for to support them to keep this whole thing going on. Nobody has the answers, or if they would, they wouldn't be giving it to you for five dollars a month. I could fucking tell you that. But if you're having a good time, come check us out. And hit that five star review on the on the podcast, the iTunes, at the very least, the very least. Yeah, appreciate y'all for joining us. We'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>